this is one of those rides at the fair. Um, I don't know, maybe some amusement parks. And there's a whole bunch of like uh, chairs that look like this, and they got chains hanging from them. And then the whole thing spins, and you, you spin it like this, and you go wee, and your and your feet dangle down like that, and then you drop stuff. You know, it's great fun. And then you go and you get some elephant ears, or uh, what are those called? What are those big those big cakes? You know, amusement park stuff. Okay, so in this case, uh, there's actually one on this side. There's there's ones all over. We're just looking at one of them. There's a flat part up here, and it has a, a radius of that disc is R, and then there's a uh, cable hanging down of length L, and the person in the ride is swinging out at an angle theta. And so the question is, how fast does this thing have to be rotating in order for that to happen? And I pick some values. I have L of three meters, R of four meters, and theta is uh, 90 to, uh, 50 degrees. Well, let's start off with the force diagram. So here's my here's my person. What force is acting on that person? Well, there's only two. There's the downward gravitational force, mg, and then the, there's a tension in the rope like this. So we think about long range of contact forces. I mean, the tension is touching, the rope's touching the cable, and gravity's not. So other than that, there's nothing else touching that person. There's no other interactions with that person. So you can see that if the tension in the rope, this angle, is theta right there, right? Because if it's pulling up there, then that angle right there is the same as that angle. Um, but with these two forces in different directions, there's no way they can add up to zero. It's impossible for these to add up to zero, and they don't. Uh, they don't, they do create a net force. So I can write this F net vector equals MA, and if I wanna break that into X and Y coordinates, I can, so let's call this the X direction and that the y direction, then there is indeed an acceleration in the x direction, in the negative x direction. Because if this is going around in a circle, then you have to accelerate in order to, towards the center of the circle in order to move around the circle. So I know that the acceleration of an object moving in a circle is v squared over r, uh, which is equal to omega squared times r. We, in this case, want to use this version because we're looking for the angular velocity of the whole ride. So let's write the net force in the x direction, F net x. What forces are acting in the x direction? Well, it's just this one force, a component of that. And so I have up here the x component of that force, and then where'd my red go? I thought I had a red, there it is. And this is my y component of the force. So since the x component of the force is the opposite side of that triangle, if this total force is t, the magnitude, then the x component would be equal to negative t sine theta because that's the opposite side. And negative because it's in the negative x direction. I just happen to pick my person over here on the, in this, if I would have done it over here, it would have been a positive. It doesn't really matter. And that's going to be equal to the mass times acceleration, so I have the mass, and then the acceleration is omega squared times r because it's moving in a circle and it's negative because that's toward the center of the circle. So I'm gonna say negative omega squared r. Now you'll notice I use lowercase r, that's this distance, and uppercase r is that distance, and those are two different things. So let's write this r, I need to find this r. It's obviously gonna be this value right here of r, plus, so it's gonna be this, which is r, plus this value right here. So if this is the length L and that's the angle theta, then this is gonna be L sine theta. So I can write R equals big R plus L sine theta. That's the total radius of the circle that this swing's moving in. Uh, so now if I put that into up here, the, the, the negatives cancel, I get T sine theta equals M omega squared r plus l sine theta. Now, the signs don't cancel because of this r right there. If I didn't, if r was zero, then those sine values would cancel, but they don't, so. Uh, and I'm trying to solve for omega, but I don't know t. So let's go over to the, uh, the y component of this force. So if I say f net y, the y acceleration for this is gonna be zero if they stay in a horizontal circle. 
so that's zero. So what forces act in the y direction? We'll have a component of the tension. Now that's the adjacent side right here. So it will be T cosine theta minus mg equals zero. So from this, I can solve for T. Add mg to both sides. I get T cosine theta equals mg. And then divide both sides by cosine theta. I get T equals mg over cosine theta. Now I can plug this in over here. Let's go ahead and solve this for omega. I'm going to divide both sides by m times r plus l sine theta. So I get t sine theta over m r plus l sine theta equals omega squared. Now I can substitute in for the t and I get mg sine theta over m cosine theta r plus l sine theta. The masses cancel, which is really nice if the masses cancel, right? Because uh, this swing, it shouldn't matter what mass of person is over there. Um, so that's that. Now let's see, uh, I can just take the square root of both sides. So let's just, let's just write that out. So omega equals the square root of g, 9.8, times the sine of 50, all of that over cosine 50, times r, which is 3, plus l, which is, no, this is 4. 4 is r. l is 3 sine of 50. Okay, now I have to put that all in my calculator. And I'm not really looking forward to this because I'm probably going to make a mistake. But I'm going to do it anyway because I care about you. And I'm going to use this calculator that I hate. Clear. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is square root. And then I'm going to say 9.8 times sine. And I'm in degrees mode. 50. Close parentheses. Divided by parentheses. Cosine. 50, close parentheses, times parentheses, 4 plus 3 times sine, 50, close parentheses, close parentheses, and then close parentheses, 1.36. radians per second. I think that's right. I honestly don't trust this calculator. So if you get a different number here putting this in, that's cool. I believe you. I completely trust you. Um, one of the other questions that I asked was, what is the apparent weight? Um, and so in this case, uh, you know, how many g's would this be? I think the best answer to this would be, what is the tension? What's the magnitude of the tension? Because you don't feel this gravitational force. There's not a normal force per se, but if you look at a person in a chair, then there is a normal force, because it really looks like this. Here's a chair, here's the person sitting down, and then there's the tension. So for that person, there's actually a normal force pushing up and a gravitational pushing down like that. And so when we talk about the normal force being the apparent weight, that would be the same as the tension in this case. Uh, so let's just solve for that value. Uh, t, I already know, I can just plug it in right here, right? That's my magnitude of T. So let's just put that in uh, clear. And let's, so one of the things I want to do is to get the uh, gravitational, I want to know how many G's this is, right? So I would say I could multiply MG, but then I want to divide by MG. So I, it's just going to be one over the cosine of theta. So the weight, the parent weight, a w is going to be equal to uh, 1 over the cosine theta. So let's do 1 divided by cosine of 50. And I get 1.55. So 1.55 g's. I don't know why I added it in there. That was just for fun. So there you go.